Hey ARMY, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna show you how I got this hot red hair, how I installed it, how I colored it, literally everything. So let's begin. So first things first, I'm gonna show you how I color it. So I'm gonna take a bucket of hot, hot, hot water. And I usually like to use clear buckets so that I can see what color um, is coming out in the water. And this is a new technique that a lot of people have been using and it's called water coloring. Um, so I'm going to take some hair dye and the hair dye that I'm using is Salmon by Kiss. That's the color name Salmon. And I'm going to pour a little bit of it inside of the hot water and mix it around. I also got the spatula from the beauty supply store. You can find this color by Kiss at the beauty supply store. It's my favorite brand of coloring um, just because it colors really well and it smells so, so, so good. Like it actually smells like perfume. So I'm going to take the ends of this blonde wig that I have. There's no specific company that I got this wig from being that I have my own vendor. That's why you guys probably never seen me mention any hair company. But I'm going to take the ends of this blonde wig and I'm just going to dip it in that pink. So what I'm going for is almost like a red uh, ombre in into a salmon pink. That's the exact color I want. So as you can see, I wanted it a little bit darker, so I have to add a little bit more of the salmon color. Um, I'm not going to add too much, but you know, this is an easy thing to do when you're adding little by little. You don't want to add too much and then it comes out the color you don't want. So as you see, it is a little darker and I'm going to add that wig back into the bucket and just dye the ends. Water coloring is like the easiest technique of dyeing. I literally feel like I've never used to do hair color because I hated dyeing hair because no one wants to sit there all day and dye strand by strand. So this is the color that I was looking for and I'm super happy with this. So I'm not gonna dip it anymore because the more you dip it, the deeper it's gonna get, the more pigmented the color is gonna get. So now I'm gonna take this Kiss Express hair color and this is in the color Scarlet. And this is where I messed up. I'm gonna tell you guys my exact mistake. So as you see, I refilled the bucket with water, but my problem was I put too much water this time. And I did that because I thought the rest of the hair, I was it was the majority of the hair. And I don't know why, I just thought I needed more water. Don't ask me why. I'm not, a, you know, I'm not perfect. I don't do my hair. So I don't know, I was just experimenting. Um, but my problem was I put some of that color in the water and the water diluted the color. It was more water than it was color. So the color came out pink and it also came out a little bit of orange. Um, this color reminded me of something like a fruit punch or honestly, I was calling this wig Trolls the movie. I don't know. It was so funny to me, but I really did not like the color at all. I could have stuck with it if I wanted that color or if I was even going with that color, but it really just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. It was too, too, too bright. And it just was very, just, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't like it. Um, as you see, I'm trying to fix it here. I was trying to add more color, more red, trying to see if I'm bugging. And honestly, it was, it was bad. Like, <laughs> no, but the thing about it is that the ombre was so like good that if I really wanted this wig like this, it would be perfect. But I just wasn't going for that. The roots dyed orange, the rest of the hair was hot pink, then the ends were like a soft pink, and I just didn't want it. I don't know, but it's that easy to dye hair. The best part about watercoloring is that it doesn't dye your lace, so you can literally get any single color you want without dyeing your lace by accident. So I panicked, so I ran to the beauty supply and I got a new hair color, and I tried this again. So I got the Kiss colors this is in the color crimson and this is the exact red that i wanted so i should have got this uh bottle of hair color to begin with and i should have knew not to put as much water and i also added this kiss um hair color inside of there as well this is me testing it um i forgot this name i believe it's ruby red and i'm adding that just because i want that really 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 bright red so I'm going to try this again and I'm going to hold the ends because obviously I want the ends to be, you know, ombre pink and I'm going to try this again and let's see how it goes. So 
so as I said before I like to add little by little so that I don't make a mistake and add too much and at this point I was not happy with the hair color so I decided to add the whole bottle and at this point I was just like I have nothing to lose like let's just go in like I just want it just red let's just do red and let's just get it over with <laughs> I added that ruby red as well so I could get that hot, hot red and I'm going to continue dyeing. Now, as I stated before, I wanted the ends to be pink, but I feel as if the hot pink that had accidentally got onto the hair that I accidentally dyed, it ruined it for me. And I just was not feeling that hot pink. I did not want pink anywhere. I wanted that salmon, orangey pink looking color. So I just decided to just cover the ends in red as well. And let's just do the whole wig red. Um, so at this point, I felt, I felt as if I needed more red because it wasn't coming out as much as I wanted it to, so I dyed it over again. So this is the exact red that I was going for at the top of the hair, but obviously we have the bottom of the hair colored as well. But overall, this is the red that I wanted. And as you can see, I have already flat ironed and plucked a little bit of the hairline on this wig. Being that this is a blonde wig, I really didn't need to pluck too much because I didn't want to look bald, especially being that this is color. Um, but yeah, I did flat iron and blow dry. So now I'm going to use a cap and I got these caps from Amazon. I'm going to link it below, but these caps are skin colored caps and it matches perfectly with my skin tone. A ton of them come in one pack. I've been using them for a couple months now and I haven't ran out. So I love that. So I'm going to take some got to be glued, uh, freeze blast spray, whatever it is. It's really cold. <laughs> and I'm going to put this around my edges. This is going to protect my edges and also this is going to glue down our cap. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and literally cut the smallest hole ever around my ears. And I'm just going to shape that around my ears. Now you want to be careful when you're doing this because this is a stocking cap. So you have to understand that any little rip, is this stocking cap is going to like get runs in it. So think of like stockings that you put on your legs. Um, so you want to cut this, the hole really, really small and then stretch it just a little bit around your ear. And this trick allows us to be able to glue down our sideburns on that cap because if we don't have the hole in our ear, um, it's gonna lift near our ear and that stocking cap is not going to touch our skin when we're spraying the free spray. So now I'm gonna take a blow dryer and I'm just gonna blow dry that free spray and I'm gonna blow dry it till it's completely dry. If it's not completely dry, your cap is not going to stay on. And then after it's dry, I'm gonna just take some scissors and cut off the rest of the cap that is not glued down. Some people like to use lace wig glue to do this part to glue down their wig cap, but I think that's just a little too harsh being that you're already going to use lace glue for your wig. So I think uh, it's really smart if you use the got to be glue or the got to be free spray. Um, and the best part about using those two uh, products, the got to be, is that you can still shape your cap to your head shape. So sometimes you can like uh, spray it down too far on your forehead and but with the free spray, you can pull it back a little bit and still cut. With the lace glue, it's not that easy because lace glue is really, really, really harsh and it stays for a couple of days. Um, so as you see, I'm just trimming that cap to where I want it to be because I don't want it to be too far because that's where I want to 
put my wig. Now I'm gonna take this Benefit Hula Bronzer and this is in the color Caramel and I'm gonna put this on the edges of that cap. Even though this cap is a skin colored color, um, I still want to use this bronzer because it matches my skin perfectly. It is the exact color of my skin and I just feel as if it has the perfect tones. And I just want to make sure that it's not the cap is not any other color when I apply my lace. This is just a step I do just to make sure it matches. You know, this is not necessary if your cap matches you um, completely, but you can do this. So now, before I plan on gluing my wig down, you want to make sure you're always trying your wig on a couple of times before you make decisions because you don't want to make the wrong decision and you're going to be screwed. Like, you can't take it back. Um, so as you can see, um, my lace on this wig is a little white. So I am going to fix that. And I'm also kind of measuring where I want my lace to sit. And I'm just trying to see if I can see that cap through the lace, even though I'm going to fix it, the color. Um, I'm just, you know, trying it on. So I'm going to take that hula bronzer again, and I'm just going to color the lace wig. Now, as you see, I put it back on, and it matches perfectly. Like, it's perfect. Don't mind the actual edges of the lace, but if you see near the hairline of the red, the red hair, um, it matches perfectly. It looks like my skin. So at this point, I'm just figuring out where I want to lay my wig. And this is a really important step that most people, all people should follow. I am going to cut around my ear on that lace. So this is kind of like the same thing that we did on a cap, but we're just doing it on a lace wig. And this is because you don't want your sideburns flapping up. You don't want it to, you know, come up or it's, it's just going to be really uncomfortable if you do not cut the lace around your ear. This is what makes a wig custom. It is a customized wig because it is made to fit your ears, your head, your hairline, literally everything. So as you can see, it is perfectly cut around my ears. It is sitting behind my ears and my sideburns are laying flat. So now it's time for me to measure where I want my actual hairline to be. So the trick I learned about a hairline on a lace wig is to not put it too far on your forehead because that's when it starts looking ratchet, it starts looking real ghetto, and it just looks a mess and it doesn't look cute. Um, so you wanna make sure that it's a little further than behind because you still want baby hairs you know um, I'm just gonna pluck this side a little bit um, of the hairline and I'm still measuring where I want it to be this took a couple of minutes um, perfection takes a minute and now I'm going to cut into the lace I'm not gonna cut all the way back towards the hairline but I'm gonna cut these little flaps um, this is a step that I see my hairstylist do um, some you know you guys know I like to get my hair done but I don't know I just tried to experiment and see if I can do it myself and um, I usually like to cut the lace off before I glue everything down and then I just glue it down once I see like the, all the lace cut but I decided to glue it before I cut the lace the, the glue I'm gonna be using is by bold hold and I'm going to take a popsicle stick um, I have tons of these because you know sometimes I do glue my own lace down and I am going to put some glue under those flaps and I'm going to literally put this right near the wig cap that I applied before like I said I'm not really used to doing this step by myself this is something that my hairstylist does um, but I'm experimenting and I'm just putting that glue kind of so here's the thing I have a tan line on my forehead because I wear wigs all the time um, so I'm putting that glue kind of in that area and I'm also putting it on the cap so that the cap can stay glued down as well and um, I'm kind of just memorizing where the hair would be and I'm I don't know this is this is the part of experiments and you don't know why you did it you're just doing it <laughs> So now I'm gonna start laying that lace down from one side to the other. 
and we're just gonna wait till that dries and then once it dries we're gonna cut off the lace this is almost like the same steps as gluing down the wig cap aka the bald cap um, it's the same exact steps you're gonna glue it down and then you're gonna cut off the rest of the lace that's not glued down I decided to try this technique because I've seen a couple other people do it and it comes out really well and I'm just tired of the tedious task that it takes to like glue down every little flap when the lace is already cut. I'm like over it at this point. So I decided to do it this way and see how it comes out. As I said, I'm experimenting and I'm going to take a blow dryer and just blow dry that lace glue and make sure it's really dry. So now I'm going to take one of those cheap eyebrow razors you get from the beauty supply store. They cost like a dollar. And I'm going to use this to cut off the extra lace. Um, I'm using this. I usually, I usually use this in my other videos as well um, rather than scissors because scissors give you a straight cut. And when you're using a razor, it's a little jagged. So that makes the lace blend a little bit more. Um, but this razor wasn't that good. So I was getting a little frustrated. But I mean, it's better than scissors because I want my lace to be invisible. As you can see, I tried to use the scissors because I was getting frustrated and I was just not happy. Like I was not feeling it at all. So I went back to the razor and I just cut and cut and cut and cut. What will make your lace blend really well is when the lace is not cut so evenly. Um, if you think of, think about hair, so if you if you cut your hair straight in a line and you try to put some clippings in, you're gonna literally see your hair straight like it's gonna be a mess but if you have pieces that are uneven then your clippings are gonna blend so it's the same thing with lace So I'm just taking the back of that comb and just making sure um, the lace is really glued down really tightly. And I always leave the front of the hairline for last. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna cut with that razor again. And as you can see, I cut literally all the pieces off. There's no leftover pieces that are hanging that I need to glue down. So I'm going to go on to blend in the lace a little bit more with some color. Um, as you can see, you can see the lace a little bit. And now I'm going to take that bronzer that I used before. And I'm going to take a little makeup brush and just tap a little bit of that bronzer on top of that showing the lace. Now, I wasn't really happy with the way this came out because I felt as if you can see the lace still and I just wasn't feeling it. Um, so I'm going to tie the lace down just so that it can really secure and, you know, get dry. And then I'm, get, I'm moved on to do my makeup and now I'm back to blend it a little bit more. So I tried to go back in with that bronzer and blend it a little bit more but I just wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't happening for me. I tried to use other eyeshadow colors to blend it and I still wasn't feeling it. I tried to rub it a little bit and wasn't feeling it. So like I, I feel like I can see the whole shape of the lace. I'm not sure why it was coming out like that. So what I decided to do was take a little bit of alcohol, rubbing alcohol onto a napkin and I just rubbed it over the lace a little bit. And I feel as if that kind of diluted the bronzer color a little bit and made it a little more not so, it's not standing out so much. Um, and as you can see, it's blending so flawlessly right in front of your eyes. And I don't know, it just helped rubbing that alcohol on it. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it literally made the whole lace invisible like i can't even see it so now that i'm happy with how my lace looks it's time to move on to styling the hair and i'm going to start with the baby hairs um this is a part that i wasn't too confident about because i don't like colored baby hairs i think it's tacky i think it's whack but i think just doing a little bit is okay so I cut small pieces, but I'm not going to do baby hairs around my whole hairline. I'm just going to do it right above the arch of my eyebrow. Um, I'm not part. I'm not sure what part of the forehead this is called, but yeah, I'm just going to do this on each side. 
and I'm going to do a little bit of sideburns and literally that's it. I'm not doing like a whole bunch of swirled baby hair all around like absolutely not. Um, so yeah, I took a little bit of mousse and I used that to do my baby hairs. I didn't want to use any type of gel or edge control because that would give it a really harsh look. Um, I wanted it to look really soft. So I used some styling foam, aka mousse. It's almost the same. So I'm happy with the baby hairs at this point and now I'm going to start styling it how I want it to be. Um, I want a middle part so I'm going to make sure I get a really sharp part and as I said before I've already flat ironed this hair so I'm just going to hot comb my part and make sure everything is like super duper flat. Something that's really important to do when you're wearing a colored wig or even a black wig um, is to make sure that the part in your hair is standing out. Um, now, I'm going to use the same powder, the same bronzer that I used before for this part. Um, some people like to use concealer, but I wouldn't recommend using that because that's liquid and it can literally get everywhere. It goes, liquid goes a long way. Powder is super soft and easy to use, so it's not going to look as harsh. Um, and you want to make sure that the part is the exact skin color of your face. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of that bronzer and make sure that the part is standing out. And this just gives it a more realistic look that the red hair is coming from your actual scalp. And that is the finished tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I was panicking throughout this video because of the lace and then the hair color. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And thank you guys so much for the compliments on my Instagram. Make sure you go to my Instagram and you follow me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.